Hi guys, welcome back to episode two of Adventures in Colour with me, Natalie Porter, and him, Chris. Chris, <laughs> say hello. Okay, we need to practice that a little bit more for next time. <laughs> um, how are you guys doing? I hope you are very well, and I hope you enjoyed episode one. Um, so this little series that we're doing on cake flakes, like I said before, we are super excited to be here, but it is all about colour, which is my absolute favourite sub subject and topic to talk about in the world. Um, simply because colour absolutely always and consistently will transform everything that you do. Um, it is so important to get it right, so it's something that I'm really, really passionate about. Last week we looked at colour theory, um, hang on, it should have been on my desk, and we went through all the bits and bobs to do with the colour wheel and how a colour wheel works, how you can use it to uh, figure out the recipe, if you like, for a particular colour, sort of if you're mixing red and yellow or red and purple or pink or whatever it is. Um, so we went through all of that in episode one and starting today we are going to take ourselves through the, uh, the various different colours. So the first one we're going to do today is uh, red and pink. Um, Chris, you look like you had something to say. I did. I was just going to mention if, uh, you know, the, the, the tiny little, um, well not the tiny little, the handy colour wheel that you have in the book there. Oh, I see. Yes. Yeah, that, that's a fair point. That is a fair point. So if anybody's got our wee book of colour, it comes with um, like a postcard of a colour wheel that you can like pin on the fridge or and blue tack to the wall. stuff on the back there. Yeah, with some extra information on the back. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, um, no, no, you're fine, you're fine. Um, so yes, yeah, so we're going to start with red and pink and then in the following weeks we will do yellow and orange, greens, blues and purple and then in the final episode I plan to have a look at using um, black, white and grey as well because that's another sort of important um, you, set of colours. Well, they're not necessarily on the colour wheel, they are important. Aye, right, they're there, they're definitely there. Um, so yeah, red and pink today, we're going to start off mixing some colours, looking at them, we're going to look at what colours go with your reds and pinks, and then um, for the little mank we're going to do some red berries on a branch, um, which are sh super shiny. Super, super shiny? Super shiny. Um, because I'm just, I'm obsessed with uh, red glazed berries. I think they are the prettiest, lushest, most succulent looking things um, ever. So that's what I will show you how to make towards the end. Um, so Christopher, if you could swap our cameras over please. Certainly. My sweetheart, oh love of my life. Um, so this is our colour wheel. This is, so what we went through last week was that this one, which is based on red, yellow and blue. You don't want to use that, it's naff get rid of that, you want to use this one, which is based on cyan, magenta and yellow. Um, so that is basically, instead of having like royal blue and red as primaries, you've got a really bright magenta pink and a really bright cyan blue, and this wheel just gives you a lot more uh, scope for mixing colours up and things. Um, so red, you can see, are here. They are somewhere in between your magenta and your orange on the wheel. Um, when I'm mixing up red colours, I tend to buy my flour paste ready mixed. Um, this is Squires, I, I use Squires for most stuff. Um, and you will see, and that's uh, to be honest, I do that just because otherwise it takes such an awful lot of colour to get red red, that it's one of those things that it's easier to buy ready mixed. So I tend to, so red, navy and black are the colours that well, I What happens buy. if you do try to colour a deep well, like a red like that from white. Um, well, you can do it, it's just that you're going to have to put an awful lot of colourings in there and it can affect the consistency of your paste and it can end up a little bit sloppy and a little bit, uh, little bit overly wet and sticky, which is why, partly out of practicality, part laziness, if I'm being completely honest. Um, Not laziness, I tend just to buy time it. efficiency. Time efficiency, I tend to buy it ready mixed. Um, so this is how it tends to come out. You can see it is a really bright sort of pillar box red, post box red, um, which I realise for our international viewers, um, British post boxes are bright red. Oh yeah. <laughs> because so. they're not in other places. I think they're green in America. They're green? Or yellow. Or blue. Or blue. I don't know. I know that they're not necessarily red. And I've done that before. I've sat there and said, oh, it's like post box red. And people are like, what? what? <laughs> um, so here they're red. And I personally, I don't think that that is the best colour. Um, one of the things we spoke about last week was how a small adjustment to your colour can hugely change it and give you something a lot, um, a lot snazzier looking or a bit more elegant, a bit more subtle, whatever. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to show you is how we can change our reds 
to make nicer looking reds basically. Um, again, I've just got a little bit of petal base, I can use Trex or Crisco, it's just white veggie fat and it's just so that I don't stick. That's almost a little bit orangey. Yes, and they often are out of the pack. So the first trick I'll show you is what happens if we add some magenta. Um, I'm just grabbing some cocktail sticks, again in an attempt to not make a terrible mess of myself, but it will probably happen. Um, so I'm being quite... Uh, liberal. Generous, liberal, yeah, with adding it in. And hopefully we will see it become, there we go, look, a much richer, warmer, ruby-like colour. Which, let me give that a proper mix-up. And actually, do you want to zoom in a little bit just so that we can definitely see all the colours and stuff there? Yeah. which if I put that next to our original red, you can see there's a huge difference. And in terms of um, which one is a nice colour to use, hopefully you guys will agree with me that this one is a much nicer colour than that. This one's just a little bit harsh. It's a bit, um, I can't think of another word other than harsh. It's not terribly pretty to look at. Whereas this one has got that extra warmth in it from that pink tone and it is a much more pleasant colour and certainly if you were doing something um, Christmassy or for a wedding you're going to want that nice warm red rather than that brighter orangey uh, one. Um, so that was the first thing. The second thing then if you want an even deeper red is to add, let's take a little bit more of that, again I'm being stingy with my own flower paste. Why? I don't know, it's habit, just, uh, just the way I am. So I'm going to add a little bit of purple in there, which, <laughs> I'm always nervous when I do this. I know it works, but there's always a moment of like, oh God, what if it doesn't work whilst I'm doing it? So just a little bit of purple there, and actually that was quite a lot of purple, probably more purple than was strictly necessary. And you can see that we are gonna get a sort of plummy burgundy-like color. So the point I'm just trying to make is that they're all red, but they're very different reds and they're going to have different uses and they're going to look different when you're combining them with other colours. And again, you're thinking about the, uh, the purpose of the project. So if you're after something Christmassy, again, just because red, or if you want um, sort of bright, if you were after, say, bright Valentine's Day type roses, you'd probably want to go for this colour. Whereas if you had a bride who was doing, um, say, a September wedding with ruby and sort of dusky type roses, um, dusky, what do I mean, burgundy is the word I'm looking for, sorry, then that would probably be the colour you want to go for. Um, and then the final one that I'll show you, and actually this is what we'll use on our berries later on, is what happens if we go the other way. So, so far these colours, let me swap them, it'll make more sense that way, so these are reds that are leaning towards the pink and the purple with the plummy colours and stuff there. So all I'm going to do now is take another lump of my bright out the box red and add some orange and see what happens when we make a really orangey red. Let me just open up my orange paste, which is just there. And again, I'm going to be fairly liberal with it, just to, to, so that you guys can see and to make the point. Because always remember that you can, you know, you can add just a little bit, you can add a lot. You can do what we did last time of um, rolling the little balls of very concentrated colour so that you can control how much you're adding. Okay, and then that there is an orangey red. So you can see all within that same description of red, we've got all these different colours and of course everything in between. And don't forget that as always, you can add more white to these, so more paste, or you can take just a little bit like this and add that to, you know, a bigger blob of white. And you're going to make a dozen more colours within that by varying how saturated the shade is. So I suppose it would help not to think of things, if you're thinking about the colour of things. Yes. Like if something maybe you wanted to design, yes. you don't want to think about it as red or blue. 
I, it's, you want to start thinking about it in terms of the shade exactly. of red. And it's it's the colour that it is. And that, that's why you, you may have noticed, and I think I said this last time, I tend not to name the colours. Like some things are obvious, like me saying that one there, so it's a ruby red or saying it's a burgundy red. That's fine, we all know what we mean with that. But with some of the other colours, I tend not to give them names. Like, do you guys remember the, the sort of the big, um, the blush trend of... 2015, 2016, give or take. I, think oh, I it remember it well. When um, every, just don't make faces at me, Christopher. But when all these lies are saying, "Oh yeah, I'm having blush and gold, or blush and silver," da, da, da. talking from one person to the next, some people had their blush as being peach. For other people, it was a pinky colour. For others, it was a very dusky pink. And that's why it's so important to sort of ignore the names and look at what the colour actually is. Um, so that's our first part. When we come back, we're going to do the same thing, but for pinks, and then we'll have a quick look at what other colours they go with nicely. Um, so do come back. We will be here after this quick break. I have three questions for you. Do you love all things cake? Do you want to learn from some of the world's best cake artists? Do you want to be part of our growing community of over 200,000 members? Then get yourself over to cakeflix.com where we've got some amazing deals on right now. We offer a 365 day support plus the most amazing Q&A service. You can now view us on all the main streaming services. So what are you waiting for? Head over to cakeflix.com now and become part of the Cakeflix family. So in this bit, we're going to look at pinks. Um, it's funny, I, I'm not personally a terribly pink person. Um, like I would never decorate anything in the house or something like that pink, despite the fact that all of our branding is bright pink and I do make a lot of pink flowers. Um, I really like it as a colour for flowers and stuff because I think it, it, can, be, it can be soft and girly. Um, it can be kind of that particular uh, shade of baby pink that's kind of Barbies and princesses. Um, you add in that little bit of grey tone to it and you get wonderful, elegant vintage colours and stuff. Or indeed you can go the whole hog, bright magenta all the way and do things that are like mega pink. So it's, it's a really versatile colour. Um, so I'm going to show you how to mix up some different shades and again it's just looking at what happens if we take, do you want to swap us? There we are. If we take our sort of pink in the middle and what happens if we do some orangey tones or do some pinky tones. Um, Purpley tones. Sorry, I totally just blew a raspberry at you all there. I'm very sorry. <laughs> Spudging my words, I need to put my teeth back in. So, same deal, bit of petal base just so that I'm not sticking to everything. And I'm going to start off with a reasonable sized lump and I'm just going to whack a bunch of pink in it. So, a bunch of our magenta colour there. And just get that mixed in so that we have got a really it's bright, really hand, oh sorry, really strong pink. <laughs> that always happens when you zoom it in because I forget I need to oh, no. be higher up every time. Every time. Okay, so that there is a nice medium pink. Um, if we want to, we can take just a little of it and mix it in with some more white. Yes. Yeah. Just like that. And you can see it's it's the same colour, but you can just make it's that thing again of remember that you can different shades, so varying the saturation of the colour can give you a, a dozen different colours just from the same pot. Um <clears throat> so that was a, a paler one. So let's have a little look here what happens if we add some purple and I'm just going to do a tiny bit to begin with because you can always add more but you can't take it away. Wait. Remember to say it this time. Um, and you can see that the purple is just going to soften it a bit. You're going to get a, a, a pinky purple colour but it's just it's a little more muted, it's a bit softer, it's not quite so violently bright as what the, the pure pink is. And then of course from that if we were to add even a little more purple, we will start to head towards, um, well, 
a more purpley colour. Like I said, I don't name them because I don't have names for them all. You don't have what? Names for all the different colours, it's impossible. No, but like you said, it's better to sort of try and name it. So you put a bit more pink in there. Literally. Yeah. And you can see that that there, as a colour, is like the slap bang in between pink and purple. It's neither one nor the other. That is both of those, and then I'll take some of our pink pink again, and this time I'm going to pop some orange in it. Now, pink and orange is where coral lives, and coral is a glorious, bright, springtime, wonderful colour. I quite like working with sort of peaches and corals and stuff. So you can see that that there, again, is a pretty bright, pretty intense colour. But if we add some more white to it, to be honest, seeing as I've got it sitting here, I'm not going to add white, I'm going to add the pale pink. Same difference, because we've got pink in there anyway. As we add that and make it paler, you will see that that combination of pink and orange actually gives you this lovely like, coral colour. Um, and I don't think you can get coral peonies, which are beautiful. In real life? In real life. Even that, I mean, corals are weird. I, I wonder where the name of coral for a colour uh, came from, I given was, that coral is usually like... It's kind of almost a browny colour. Under the sea, what, coral, as in like sea coral? Yeah. No, sea coral is all sorts of colours. Yeah, I suppose so. But well, Yeah, but then why, anyway. call, why call that colour coral? Do you know what well, I've always wondered? Is if, right, blow your minds now, is an orange called an orange because it's orange? Or do we call the colour orange oh, because an orange is orange? <laughs> I'm pretty sure. And I'm just going to take these and I'm going to add just a touch more. Uh, so I've put the rest of that pale pink in just to lighten it again a little bit. And I'm just going to add a tiny little bit of orange again just to show you. As. Not bad. But no, I'm serious about the thing about the orange. It could be either. Oh, there was, I read it the other day and I can't remember which way around it was. So, there you go. Those are all of our pinks. With our pink pink in the middle, down to purpley colours and orangey tones of pink. So that is... With up. Sort of, again, um, well I can't. Well let me move, let me yeah. zoom out. Just so that's that bit from your pink with your orange tones and stuff. And you can see that this is where I just grab the reds out. Reds are, in truth, an orangey pink, really. Just a lot of orange in your pink. Yeah, but it, like I said, it's much easier to start off with your, which one was it, this one, with your red flower paste and then adjust the colour than it is to be sitting there mixing all those pinks and oranges together. They're kind of sort of the same thing, but they're also not. So anyway, that is all of our pinks and reds. So the next thing that I wanted to have a look at, I need to... Um, Christopher, yeah. could you just get me a bit of damp kitchen paper because I'm sticky and colourful for a change. Although, again, not as colourful as I could be, there have been times <laughs> when it is disastrous. Or disastrous, I don't know. Anyway, so I have just got, this is going to be a very glamorous look at um, how colours combine and stuff and what goes together. Um, in your own time, sweetheart. All right. Thanks. So demanding. Well, you know, you must take care of the talent. You like to refer to me as being, you as being my producer, so that's your job. Anyway, <clears throat> we do like each other. I'm conscious that there might be people watching this who don't, like, know us. <laughs> we do actually get on very well. Um, so, I'm going to do this the easy way, which is to have just picked up a bunch of, um, my colouring pencils and just because why not and it will amuse me to do so I'm just going to do some leaf shapes with them. Some leafy shapes. Yeah. <clears throat> oh. So the first one and this one are almost the same but actually not quite. The first one has got a much bluer tone to it than what that one does. Um, what else have I got here? I think that one and that one are the same. Is that the same? 
Yes. And then, okay, so if I do this one again, there, and I'm going to add some yellow to it, just so that we've got like a much kind of brighter looking green. Um, and this, you could do this with flower paste, you could do it with anything. Do you want to zoom in again? Yeah. Yes. Um, and this is just so that we can grab our various blobs of colour and have a look at which ones work with which shades of green, really. Um, so, for example, you wouldn't really want to do red and a turquoise green because that, I don't know about you guys, if I cover up the rest of it, it just looks naff, man. <laughs> But that wouldn't work. Um, with your bright reds, you want a deep green. So in other words, a, a colour that is itself uh, bold enough to stand next to the boldness of the red. So that one would work, or this one would work. And again, if you're looking at your sort of ruby or burgundy colours there, then those deeper ones are much nicer. Um, with the pinks, those purpley ones, you could go for a deep green there, would work. You can actually, pink and turquoise is a good combination. Um, and that one there, that was the one that had just a little bit of purple in it, so you can see that doesn't not go as well. And then finally, we've got those kind of coral colours that we did, which coral and like a olivey khaki type green always go really nicely, so that could be that one. Or if you wanted something a bit brighter, um, then that one they would do but the point I'm trying to make is that sort of match your colours across as you go um, so that instead of just only ever using one colour for your leaves pick a colour that works and it's not you know not necessarily going to be completely true to nature because I appreciate you don't get there's no such thing as a rose leaf that, that is that colour um, but actually it will look really nice really really nice so yeah, I'm, I'm not ever afraid, and nor should you be, of um, of uh, matching, changing the colours that you're using so that they work from a design point of view, even if it's not true to nature. Um, there's one more. I'm going to give you one sort of bonus colour scheme. Can you swap back? Sorry, I didn't realise that's what we were doing. So the um, this is one of the nicest combinations that one of my favourite combinations for Christmas, which is to have your ruby red, so that's the nice rich one. So that was our red red with some pink added into it. A nice deep evergreen. And then that always goes beautifully with gray as a combination. And that, again, if do you, are we zoomed in? Yep. Um, it's just, it's a really nice color scheme. And the, the gray is very elegant, very, uh, the word yeah it's elegant it's pretty it's not in your face and whatever and can mm. be quite soft and then you've got your two Christmas colors there and it can just be a really really nice combination that's not too garish and again it's having it's, it's the fact that it's that ruby red instead of that very bright pillar box red and then that slightly deeper green that's a bit fuller and warmer than like a like green green you know and um, like we'll do greens in a couple of weeks when we go to green but anyhow there we are so, um, so that's us done for part two. We'll be back in just a moment after a few short messages. Hi, I'm Natalie Porter and this is Immaculate Confections. In this part I'm going to show you how to make some very simple berries that we're then going to glaze and tape into a branch. They're going to be bright red, we'll dust them and um, glaze them of course and they are, like I said, I think they're just the lushest things in the world ever. Um, so if you swap us over Chris, I'm going to show our lovely viewers that I'm going to use um, one of our bright reds. So this was the sort of out the bag red with just a little bit of orange added to it so that it is super bright. Because if we start with that colour, 
we can then use our dust oh, to, um, to bring out those rich red tones. Um, I hope you enjoyed like, sort of seeing how we made all those colours and don't forget that in our little book of colour, which is exactly what it says, a little book of colour, um, you've got dozens upon dozens, I mean over 200 in fact, sort of recipes for all those different colours. So um, that's there and it's been lovely actually since, since we did last week, there's been a few people that have got in touch and said they enjoyed it and they've got the book and like what a great reference it is for how to do things and stuff. Um, so thank you. So thank you, indeed, indeed. Uh, yep, yeah, there we go. So you see the berries. I've got a candle, which obviously I've lit. Um, now needless to say, do be careful. Don't set yourself on fire. If you've got long hair, be careful of that. And do mind, um, I've done this more than a few times, of a habit of sort of reaching over to grab things and then you have this funny smell and it's because you've sort of burnt all the hairs off the back of your arm and your hand. So just, just be mindful of the flame. Um, and I've also got some 28 gauge wire that I've just cut into four or five lengths, really, whatever you find easiest per, per bit. Did you say what size of wire it was? Yeah, 28 gauge. Oh, sorry. Um, and then you're just going to roll little balls with your flour paste. So if you've seen um, any of my tutorials that I've done for cake flicks, then you've probably seen me do this before because I do like a berry. Um, they're a fantastic quick way to add little extra pops of colour different bits of texture to your designs um, and yeah I use I, I make a lot of berries don't I? You do make a lot of berries. Well, we had that conversation last week as well. Did we? Yeah. Um, but yeah I've got so what have I got? I've got three or four tutorials. Up a cake please. I think. Do the berries all need to be the same size? Um, it's up to you really. So with, with again I, I like doing things where you can learn one skill one technique and then adapt it for different things. So with the berries, if you make them really little, like super little, like um, like petit pois sized or smaller, you're going to get one look as opposed to if you make them a bit bigger, akin to a garden pea, um, or indeed bigger than that, like a, a sort of chickpea or something, you're going to get a different look. So that's our official scale of legumes. The pea scale. The legume scale, thank no, you. No, I like the pea scale. Oh, well in the book it's called the legume scale. But anyway, point we're making, same technique, but just by changing the shape, the size, the colour, you can make things that look like lots of different things. And in my head, these ones, especially when they're glazed, it's always, um, you know, like in the dead of winter, you know, over here anyhow, there will always be a handful of bushes that have got bright red or bright orange berries on them that will hang on throughout the whole season. Yeah. And especially if you've got like a frosty morning or if it snows, which to be fair, doesn't happen a lot down here. <coughs> We're down in the south of England, southeast. Um, it literally, it's like the everything is bare. It's just bare twigs and white, and then there's just these few tiny little spots of colour left where you've got these berries hanging on. Um, so that's what we're making. So yes, little ball. I often find it helps to have just a tiny bit of petal base or treks in my palm, and then you're just going to roll like that, and that should get you a nice even shape without all those lines on it. Make sure that you've got well kneaded flour paste that's nice and soft so that when you do roll it, it kind of comes back together and doesn't have any creases in it. Um, and yeah, that's, I mean, that's how you roll a ball. <laughs> <laughs> Life changing stuff, eh, guys? <laughs> um, right, that should do me for now. I'll show you how to do a few of these. I've got a little block of polystyrene just to pop them in when they are done. And all you're going to do is carefully hold the wire in the heat so that it heats up and the flame, and then shove it in the berry. I suppose you could always hold it in a pair of pliers if you were a bit um, concerned. I wouldn't, because if you were to do that, then you would lose control over where you're sticking it afterwards. Right. So for all that it heats up quick, it cools down pretty quick as well. So you do want to move quite swiftly so that you get that poof of smoke. Did that show up? Yeah. Cool. If you've got the puff of smoke, then it's done what we want it to which is to have heated up the sugar inside the berry so that it melts, thereby holding itself in place. That's basically what we're going for. And it smells um, sort of candy flossy. Uh, and people always say like, oh, it's such a nice smell. And it's like, I assure you, by the time you're on berry 4,397, it is not a nice smell anymore. Um, a couple of tips for doing this. For all that it makes it scarier, 
don't hold the wire too far down because if you hold it right at the end it's going to be harder to poke it through the berry in the right place whereas if you hold it nice and near to the top when you then go to poke it in the berry you've then got that much more control over like where it's going. a complimentary lesson about levers. Basically yes, <laughs> coming from the engineer in the corner. Um, yeah, that's the, okay, that's true, sorry. Uh, you distracted me with mathematics. So you can do that if you find that, so here's another little top tip for you. If you find that in the process of heating the wire up and poking it in the berry, that you miss and get your finger, don't worry too much, because it does hurt, but because the wire is hot, you create the wound and cauterise it at the same time, so it doesn't bleed or anything. How handy. How handy. She says, very much speaking from experience. Um, how many have we got? Oh, so, and then another little tip. Doesn't matter so much on these ones, because we're making a, a sort of a brown branch, which is why I've used the dark green wires, but if you're doing it in white, and you find that sometimes, let me see if I can find a white wire and I'll show you. Oh, here we are. I don't know what this was from. But yes, if you find that you're doing it in white and then it burns like halfway down, you don't want to see that because that would look ugly if you've got a, a pale colour and the white and everything. So if you just heat it up as normal, when you stick it in the berry, push the berry all the way down to where the white starts and you can see you've got this much longer bit sticking out, then you can just trim that down and nobody would ever know that you had sort of had that, um, that mistake. And actually, while we're here, I've forgotten to mention one of the most important things. Um, got two, really. So the reason that I do it like this is there's two reasons. The first one is that it's really quick. Um, and as you may have picked up, I am a fan of doing things speedily wherever I can. Um, these will be like, uh, give them 20 minutes, an hour, something like that, and they'll be dry enough that you can sort of dust them and get using them and stuff. Um, the other thing is that doing it like this and then poking the wire through just a little bit, can you see, I don't know if you need to zoom, sweetie pie, um, it gives you this lovely little bit just sticking out on the top there, which is very much akin to how berries look. They've always got a little twiggy bit on the top. Um, so you're kind of getting two for one in terms of the technique there. Uh, so I'm going to, we will cut to a short break just again. Um, I'm going to make just a few more berries and then we will come back and we'll dust them and I'll show you how to glaze them and then we'll tape them into a... Welcome back for the final part of our Adventures in Colour, focusing on red and pink this week. Um, so I've made all my berries, as you can see, and um, we're going to dust them now. So I think probably my second favourite thing after talking about colours is talking about petal dusts. Petal dusts are the coolest, most awesome things in the world. You can put, make some really cool effects uh, using petal dusts on top of your paste and stuff. Um, and of course, when you come to doing the petal dust, you've got to make another decision about what colours that you're using. Um, generally speaking, if you are looking for, um, like if you're starting out or you just want a kind of subtle effect, you've got your colour of your flower paste, highlight, low light, add depth with um, a darker version of the same shade. So with our red berries here, uh, we're going to put some ruby on them because that's going to match. Um, if we'd made orange berries, then we could have gone for some darker orange or a little bit red. 
um, you get the idea. So that's sort of the first thing that you can do. Or then the next thing is to be a little bit more experimental with the colours. So say um, if you'd made yellow berries, obviously you could put some orange on that. Or you could sort of skip the orange and go straight to putting some pink on them and that would work well. So dust is something that you need to experiment with and that we will look at more over the, the coming weeks. So if you swap us over crispy, there you go. Um, so the colours that I pulled out for this was all the sort of reds and pinks. Now, um, we're a little bit excited about the reds, aren't we, Chris? Yes. Why is that? Because they are new. They are brand new. Um, yes, we released them at the end of last week, sort of long awaited uh, uh, new colours to add to the range. So I'm going to start off with the red and we'll use a little bit of brown as well. Um, and that's the ruby red that I've gone for because we want that nice, rich, wintry colour as opposed to anything brighter. And then I may show you a little trick with some orange and yellow um, just at the end. So with petal dust, I always like to take it out of the pot onto a piece of kitchen paper and then just give it a good old smush with your brush. And this, this is going to do two things. The first thing that it does is make sure that if you've got any lumps or clumps of dust in the pot, you've squished them and you're not going to pick up huge granules of colour. And then the other thing is that by doing this, you put the, you're getting the colour in the bristles instead of on the bristles. So you're going to get a much nicer look. And again, do you want to zoom us? Yes. Are you zoomed? I'm not sure if we're no, zoomed. No, we're not zoomed. We're not zoomed. So with that ruby onto our bright red berries, I'm just going to flick the colour kind of up from the bottom. And we can bring it a little further up on one side if we want. And it's just <coughs> going to give us a much deeper, more um, ruby red shade. Why do you do it up from the bottom? Um, any particular reason? So I think it looks nice. I, th I think it looks nice like that, but it's also because if you think when they're growing, the colour develops from the bottom, like on any flower or anything. It, it's more often than not, it's, it's the bottom of the thing that's nearer to the plant and the stem that's darker, um, just because that's where any nutrients or new chemicals or stuff's coming from. Um, but I just like the way they look as well. And then I've got some of that brown and I'm just going to dust brown underneath to sort of deepen it up a little bit. So that is one way that you can do it. And a, another way, so we'll go in with our ruby again. And we could use a little bit of this. So this is our violet pink colour. It's a lovely, lovely bright colour, this one. And we could pop a little of that on and that is going to give us a sort of plum coloured berry that's part way between being red or purple. Just going to zoom in a little bit more. Just to make your life more difficult. Yeah. That's what you, uh, that's what you're here for, isn't it? Yep. Um, and then I'll show you as well what happens if we do some ruby red and then some pure purple on yes. top. So that was the red and let's just take a little smidgen of purple. And can you see it works and that the purple combination with the, the red combined under there, you do get a really, really deep um, dark tone to it. So that's just some some options for you and it is like there's a limit to how much we can show you accurately kind of via a video so I always suggest that the best thing that you can do with any of this stuff is to go and have a go basically make some red berries and have a practice experiment a little bit um, the reason that I had the yellow and the orange out there was just because I wanted to show you what happens if oh not this one that's the yellow brush one yeah. I'm really precious about my brushes, aren't I? You are. <laughs> As you learned the other day, the hard way. Um, so a little bit of orange, and if you want to, you can just drop a tiny bit of orange, and you could even follow with a little yellow, just on the very top of it there. Um, just, again, it, it's colour variation, it's going to make it all look more interesting. So I'm going to, for these ones, I think I'm going to go for the uh, red and brown combination. Yes. So again, so the red there and then just a little more brown underneath. So 
rest of them. And then you can do, like if you hold them carefully, you can get away with doing a few at a time. So. Just like that. And this with the berries, it's not a precision thing. It's a sort of highlights and lowlights thing. So you can kind of just have at it a little bit. And Chris, can you stop saying that? I'm doing my best. <laughs> Well, because otherwise our poor listeners are just going <laughs> to yeah, dream so I want to make you. sure that they can see. I'm really annoying sometimes. So are you. Right. So that's the red, and again a little bit of brown underneath. And then I've just got three left, which I will do now. And then we can glaze them. So I'm just going to show you that as well. So again, from the bottom up with the ruby. And then a little bit of brown there as well. And that is our berries dusted. So I'm just going to literally just sort of smush all of this out of the way. Um, can I have that box please, my dear? Yes, yes, my dear. The one you prepared earlier. Um, so glaze, you can get um, spray glaze or glaze that you paint. Um, either is fine. I prefer the spray just um, because that way it means that the your brush strokes, if you're painting it on, um, doesn't affect it. You can also dip them as well. Um, but for now I'm just going to go with spraying them. Um, you can get spray confection glaze from all sorts of places and people. Um, in the UK, the one, the one that I've got here is Cake Star, so they make it um, equally. You can get it from PME. I don't think Squires do a spray one, but they do a liquid one. Um, and I'm sure over in the States and in Australia you've got companies that produce it. I'm sure Wilton, I'd be surprised if they don't make one. Um, so I'm just popping them in here nice and spread out. There we are. Because the thing you've got to be careful of with the spray glaze is that it um, it sticks to everything. Like if you get it on something, it will never come off. There was this, there was this one time when I uh, sprayed some glaze in the sink, which was stainless steel, which I was like, oh, it's stainless steel, it'll be fine. Six weeks later, I was still scrubbing it off. So um, I always spray into a cardboard box. Um, or outdoors and if you're doing it with the stuff that you paint on don't use a paintbrush that you like because it will likely become ruined by the glaze uh, so yeah it's it's full-on stuff um, so I'm just going to I'm not sure which of you would be best maybe try the top down what do you think we'll have a look see what happens just if it ends up out of focus a little bit maybe. Open that up. Very interesting shot the inside of a cardboard box here. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're just gonna give them a spray. And you can see, you just make sure that you turn them round so that you're getting all the sides. And tops there. And you can see they're a little bit shiny. So what I'm gonna do now is leave these to dry for a little while because they'll be dead sticky right now. And then um, I'm going to do a second coat and then a third coat, and we will you, we, we'll cut to once that final coat is done, and we'll take them together. So welcome back to the final part of this week's episode. I've got three coats of glaze on my berries, and if you swap us over, can you see them glisten in there? They are just lovely, lush, rich, wet-looking things. They're fantastic. Um, so I'm just going to show you very quickly how you can tape those into a little branch. So I've got a 26 piece, a 26 gauge piece of wire, and I'm just going to fold it in half, grab some brown tape, and to begin with I'm just going to tape up the whole wire so that it is brown. And you can see I'm just doing this very quickly and being quite rough with it because we're making a twig at the end of the day so it doesn't need to be super neat. Needs to be twiggy. Twiggy indeed. So that is the start for our branch. And then I'm going to take another bit of brown tape 
and you just want to cut it into a sort of a half a third or a quarter width and that's just because it's half an inch wide and getting that to neatly wrap around these tiny little berries would be impossible. So I've got a, um, this is a, a florist tape and ribbon shredder. They are made by Gem and PME and I like to refer to it as the little yellow box of doom because it quarters your tape beautifully as you can see but it does so because it has razor blades in it and that scares me a bit to be honest. Well right for me so. <laughs> so I'm going to get my tape, so it's my quarter width tape attached to the branch and let's do that again because I totally just broke that there and then we can take a berry and tape it on there, bring the tape down a little bit Take another berry, or maybe this time we'll have two. Hold them alongside and wrap your tape around. Bring it down, and we always start at the top because otherwise if you start at the bottom you've, you've kind of got ones that you've just attached are in a way, in the way of the, uh, the, the new ones that you're attaching. So we'll carry on bringing that tape down. You can add in couple more and again just bring the tape round so that they're nice nicely attached remember that because these are on a branch themselves you can bend and twist and shape the, the branch itself and move all the berries which you can do as you go along or wait until the end either way <laughs> And these are, when I said these were dry, what I actually meant was dry-ish. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see these two, they're kind of stuck together. That's just because the glaze is still damp, but yeah, never mind. Never How mind. long would you say is ideal to let them dry? Do you know what? Just until they do dry. It's one of those things, I think the weather will affect it, how many coats you've got on. Um, it's always better, as with anything, with, with sort of paint stuff, with multiple coats, to let each coat dry completely before you add the next one, much like you would if you were painting a wall or glossing your woodwork and stuff. Um, it's always better to do that. Uh, so I'm going to put a couple more there, and that one's going to stay there because that is now <laughs> stuck and congealed with its neighbour. So hang on, let's bring the tape around and then I'll include that one that's lower down again, or break the tape off. <laughs> right. Have another go, shall we? Okay. So there's my tape back on, and here is another little berry that can come just here. I'll bend that out slightly, and then I've just got a few left, so let's do two just there, and then we can add the final one. Now, have you ever seen a wintrier, lusher, Christmassier looking branch of sugar berries? I just love them, and I think it's because they're shiny. <laughs> they're just so appealing. It's like a magpie. Yeah. Because they're so gloriously shiny. Um, so, of course, if we were doing this for real, you'd, you'd finish off. I mean, let's, let's do it, why not? We'll just tape the rest of that up so that it's neat and then you've got a little branch that is ready to use and incorporate into your uh, cake and, and sugar flower designs. Um, you can of course add multiple branches together if you wanted to or rather you could add multiple twigs together to make a bigger branch which is what I've done with this one here. Um, so that's where you, you just make a little branch and then you, you tape them together much like adding the berries. Um, and the reason that I love these so much where they are shiny is that if you use them alongside a rose or whatever other flower you've got that isn't shiny, you can see everything is red but you've got that change in texture between the very matte red rose and the shiny berries and I just I think it's a fantastic look and that's whether you're doing it with a, a red rose or a white rose or whatever other colours, I think having glazed berries it it means that you can use the same colour, but as I said, that texture is different. So as you look at it, it, it's the same but different. I think I've, I've said the word different so many times. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. It just gives you a different look. And, and glazing them and the colours and stuff is just another way 
to sort of add to your designs without having to do anything, you know, too different. Um, so that was us. That was our that was our adventure in red um, with a little bit of pink thrown in there. Um, we'll come back to pinky colours when we hit the other end of, of purple because obviously we're doing them in episodes so we've kind of got a, a linear path as it were but remember that they go round in a wheel so for all that we've started here by the time we get round to the end we're going to be back at our, our pinks. Um, I really hope you've enjoyed that and I hope it will inspire you to play with your colours a little bit more and do some things that are different um, and certainly to think about when you're using colours, what shade of the colour that you're using and how you can adjust those shades to different looks and stuff. Um, I think I, I may have mentioned a couple of times that I have a book about colour, Natalie's Little Book of Colour, um, which is just full of information like this. And of course, we've, we've got all our uh, colours and dust and stuff that we stock on our website. So do find us, give us a follow. Uh, it's Immaculate Confections UK, and that's on Instagram and on Facebook, um, or immaculateconfections.co.uk will bring you to our website. Um, the reds are brand new, uh, we were excited about that, and we also have a blue set, which I think is definitely my favourite because I love blues. And um, we did another one, white, white, black and grey, there we go, <laughs> you would think, right? It's been a long week. Um, so you'll find all of those on our website, and don't forget that if you're a member of Cake Flicks, then if you go to your uh, member discount page, there's a code there for 10% uh, off, and actually it, it's an old code because it references... Paul Bradford Sugar Craft School mm -hmm. on the thing, um, so back in the day there. So yes, I hope you've enjoyed it. We will be back next week with episode three. Um, the downside of doing this, charted in episodes like that, means that we are very aware of how quickly those weeks are passing by. Oh, um, yeah. It's bonkers, isn't it? Yeah. And it will be, I think, yeah, it will. It'll be, will it be June by the time this goes out, or is it the 31st? Uh, then, I don't know. Anyway, it is just bonkers. It will be June by then, which is insane. Um, so anyway... I hope you've enjoyed it. If you missed the first episode, you can find that on the Cake Flicks site. And uh, we will see you next week for doing yellows and oranges. So nice, bright, summery colours for you there. Um, take care, everybody. We will see you very soon. Um, thanks for watching. <laughs>